Summer is well behind us. The kids are back at school and it feels like we've got the whole of France to ourselves. Now we are cruising south into harvest season in France's southern wine growing regions. And it looks like here we've discovered another gem of a free camp spot. We asked the farmer why there's rose bushes at the end of the, um, the vines and he said that they're basically kind of like sacrificial roses. They're, they're, uh, they require the same kind of um, soil and sun as the, the grapes do and they're also susceptible to the same diseases but they are a little bit more delicate so basically if there's any fungus or any kind of diseases that's going to affect um, the vineyard uh, then it will affect the rose bushes first. So it's like an early warning system. Very beautiful early warning system. Alaska knows that these are not good for her. They're all over the floor. And I don't think grapes are good for dogs. And she has an incredible sense for what's good for her and what's not. Um, Apparently blackberries are good for her because she has absolutely no problem picking blackberries off a thorny bush. Um, but not grapes, eh, Chica? See? <laughs> He's a Chica buena! Que lista eres tu! spot in France has been like perfect for us. We've had either it's been a place with toilets or it's in a vineyard like this. I think it's acceptable in France to have wine for breakfast. This vineyard actually has um, free water and free electricity as well which is like you would not find that anywhere else in the world I don't think. Well so far we haven't. So France has a really really good at looking after the campers. Um, and it's going to be sad to leave actually because we don't know what Spain's going to be like but so far, like, France is just incredible. I can't believe these guys like kind enough to give us free power, it's amazing. We have been in the shade and in the rain for quite a few days and our batteries are depleted to about 50% um, and we have quite a lot of work to do today with editing and stuff so uh, we're just going to plug in and uh, give our batteries a nice pop up. <clears throat> this is actually the first time that we've plugged in at all on this entire adventure other than for testing the uh, the system so actually really great to be able to just you know top up our batteries like this. Usually we're off grid with the solar and uh, our alternator setup but Now, so that's kicked on, zero volts, zero amps, because I haven't connected it to the battery yet. We have a double redundancy system, so I kick that. We'll bash this straight up to 14 volts, 40 amps coming in. That is a global smart charger. So accept any electricity that we will come across in the world. If you want to know more about this awesome off-grid electrical system, I'll link it up there. That's a video you should definitely go check out. The purple pretty flower for boomerang. Time was running out for us and the season was changing. So we pushed on south in search of sun, sand and waves.
finally reached the south coast of France. I have been dreaming about coming here with Boomerang pretty much since we got Boomerang. This is the French surf coast. It is world famous. There are absolutely phenomenal waves here. And the amount of time we get to spend here is like this, but just to be here with Boomerang and just to get in that water is gonna be something to remember. This is a gift to myself after all of that hard work, getting to this point. Being in a proper campsite does come with some benefits like home delivered croissants and uh, baguettes and pain au chocolat. It's quite nice, isn't it? Mm. I mean, we rarely ever pay to stay. I wouldn't call this a campsite, it's more like a parking lot next to the beach. But um, yeah, the bread man comes. Although, boulangerie. What would, I, what would it be? Le boulangerie delivery. Delivery boulangerie. I'm <laughs> pretty sure they don't say that. <laughs> boulangerie van comes around and gives you um, bread. The southwest of France is truly blessed with surf, and this beach is one of the most iconic surf beaches in the world. Here, the beach is reclaiming World War II bunkers. Now, they serve as urban art pieces as they slowly disappear into the sand. These are some of the most photographed bunkers in surf photography. You'll see them in a lot of magazines and it really is quite a stunning landscape. These old World War II bunkers that were up on the hill and have just descended down and are slowly sinking into the beach. And have been left here along the coastline and graffitied. And it's something a little spooky, but like modern art. And um, pretty awesome to see actually in real life. with free water all over France. Um, some places you have to pay for it and it's not much uh, money anyway, but we've found free taps, free water everywhere throughout France the whole time we've been here. I think Spain is gonna be a little bit different, so um, it'll be interesting to know where we're gonna find water and yeah, places like that in Spain. Yeah, it's great on hot days like this when we can all have a shower as well. Unlimited water is very nice. Um, I will say for the most part in France that it's all potable water so you can drink it. Um, however, because it is coming from a variety of sources, uh, we're pretty pleased that we have this system where we're going to have our drinking water filtered through our UV um, ultra safe drinking water system. So that is reassuring because you just never really know for sure. I'm glad we did that in the build. I think that's it. That should do. Yes, great. Me, Ben and Alaska are going to have a nice clean today because it's nice and hot here in the south of France. It's great. Is that why you're not wearing any clothes now? Yeah. <laughs> so we've finally come to the end of our France road trip. 
which I'm a bit sad about because the country is huge and we only had maybe three weeks here, two weeks, three weeks, um, and there's just so much more to see. So I'm a bit sad that we're leaving and not only that, but this place has been the best place for van life so far. Like it's not only have we found amazing places to camp, but all the facilities in those camp spots, in those free camp spots have been excellent. We're in this gorgeous park and it has free water, it has toilets, it even has an outdoor gym. Um, it's got donkeys and um, a pig and bulls <laughs> to look at. So it's just a really nice place. Um, and in all of the camp spots that we found in France have been really nice. They've all had their own special little, you know, thing about them that's made them nice to be in. So if you haven't been, I think you should come down and experience this beautiful country. So we are basically preparing now to head over the Pyrenees Mountains. So this is the first challenge we've really had for Boomerang and his mighty air-cooled engine um, for quite some time because it's been relatively flat as we crossed the States and um, even in the UK too and even the Scottish Highlands wasn't too high so um, I'm confident it's going to be okay. This little beauty has been performing um, even better than I imagined. We have been taking care of it really well but it's seriously a solid engine um, and it's nice to know that we have this to push us on down to Africa. So, full oil. Um, don't need to do any adjustments or any maintenance. Fan belt is good, all the hoses are on and clamped down properly. We should be good to go. Ready for this boomerang? Spain, here we come. Just to be uh, extra safe, we're going to be purging a bit of um, our water so we can be a bit lighter going over the mountains because we don't want to be uh, too heavy going over the Pyrenees mountains. So we're at full tank at the moment, so we'll probably go down to half. Yeah. So we're down to a quarter of a tank now, which would be easier for boomerang to get over the mountains. And now we're gonna be crossing Spain today and hopefully it's easy to find water there because France was really easy, but I'm excited for Spain. To the south of France, as the country meets Spain, the Pyrenees Mountains rise up to form a natural border that separates the two nations. This won't be the highest range that we tackle, but the Pyrenees does rise up to 3,404 metres, more than 11,000 feet, and certainly makes for a beautiful and dramatic transition between the countries. We had to stop and check this out. This is the kind of unplanned discovery that you know you're guaranteed on a road trip. You just never know exactly when it's coming. This is insane. That over there looks like a prison cell. It's a prison inside the rock face. Damn. I'd love to see it in there. At the time, we didn't know what this magical place was. It looked like a jail carved into the mountains. We couldn't get in, so we sent the drone up for a closer look.
Later, we discovered that Fort Portolette served to defend against the invasion of the Spanish and housed nearly 400 soldiers. By World War II, the fort was used as a prison and was left abandoned for many years. Now it's open for visitors, but unfortunately, not today. As we pointed our compass south and headed for the tunnel through the mountains, we were a little sad to be leaving France. There are a thousand and one places like this still to discover. We know that we're coming back to France, so mostly we're just grateful to all the French towns who welcome overlanders like us with open arms. We have no idea at all what to expect from Spain. All we do know is that it's going to be one heck of an adventure. Oh! Getting colder! So until next time, happy travels. <laughs>